Gingerbread. December had arrived and the forest was covered in a thick quilt of snow. Berry and Dolly were sitting chatting in the ladybird's dotty house. Let's bake some gingerbread biscuits, Dolly suggested with a bright smile. Berry and Dolly got to work in the kitchen. They bustled around in a cloud of spices and flour and rolled the biscuit dough out flat on the table. Dolly got all the gingerbread cutters out of the drawer. They cut lots of different shapes out and popped the biscuits in the oven to bake. When the biscuits were cooked to a crunchy crisp, Dolly took them out of the oven and put them in a pretty bowl. Then she carefully placed the bowl outside in the snow. These hot biscuits will soon cool down in the winter chill, she told Berry. Just then, a magpie flew over the house. He could smell the delicious gingerbread biscuits and he swooped down and carried the lot off in his big beak. When Dolly came out later, the bowl and biscuits had completely disappeared. Oh dear, someone's taken my yummy biscuits, she shrieked. But who could have taken the bowl? Berry asked. Berry and Dolly decided to go and search in the forest. The first friend they ran into was Iris the Ice Beetle. Oh, Iris, someone has taken my yellow bowl full of fresh gingerbread biscuits. You didn't see who it was, did you? Dolly asked. Yes, I did. It was the magpie. He flew off in that direction. They kept walking until they met the grub. Hello, grub. The magpie took my yellow bowl filled with gingerbread biscuits. Did you see which way he flew? The grub pointed. Not long after, Berry and Dolly caught sight of Bubble and Eddie, who were building a snowman. Have you seen the magpie? He took my yellow bowl and all our gingerbread, Dolly complained. Yes, we saw him. He flew towards the stream. The potato beetle replied. Look, Dolly, fresh biscuit crumbs. The magpie must have flown this way, Berry suddenly shouted. If we follow the trail, it should take us to the magpie's nest, Dolly proposed. The pair of them followed the trail of crumbs and it took them all the way to the magpie's nest and to the sweet smell of gingerbread. Berry and Dolly climbed up the tree and knocked on the magpie's door. Did you take my yellow bowl filled with fresh gingerbread? Dolly asked as soon as the magpie opened the door. Yes, it was me. I was very hungry. I saw the bowl sitting there, so I took it. But I can give it back to you. It's not nice to take what belongs to somebody else, Dolly said and marched back to her house in a grumpy mood. Berry did his best to keep up with the little ladybird. Don't be angry, Dolly. I know that the magpie took your bowl, but he gave it back, and I'm certain that he'll apologise, the little snail said. Berry and Dolly invited their friends over that afternoon. Flutter the butterfly, Balthazar the bee, and Stanley the stag beetle all came around for tea. They all sat at the table and began to eat. It wasn't long after that they heard a soft knock on the front door. Dolly opened the door. The magpie was standing outside and looking very ashamed of himself. I brought you some rosehip cordial. I made it myself. Please take it as a gift to say how sorry I am for pinching your gingerbread, the magpie said. Why don't you come in and join us for a bite to eat, magpie? There's plenty of room for you at our table. This made the magpie very happy. The friends sat around the table, munching on delicious gingerbread biscuits and sipping fresh rosehip cordial. They chatted and laughed late into the night. Berry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? Flutter goes skiing.
On a winter day, Iris the Ice Beetle invited all her friends to go skiing. Has everyone got skis? she asked. I haven't, said Berry. And I haven't, Leapy the Grasshopper Girl joined in. Neither have I, Flutter the Butterfly added. Then let's make some skis for you. It isn't hard, Iris said with a smile. The friends all joined in. They sawed and sanded thin planks of wood, fixed foot straps to them and made poles for everyone. And the skis were finished by lunchtime. They all walked up the hill together. When they got to the top, they strapped on their skis and put on their ski helmets. Then Iris asked, Does everyone know how to ski? I can teach anyone who doesn't. They all nodded except for Flutter. The little butterfly girl didn't know how to ski, but she didn't say anything. It can't be all that hard. I'll soon get the hang of it, she thought to herself. She only dared whisper the truth to the green grub. Berry was the first to go. Whoopee! He shouted with a broad grin as he sped down the snowy hillside. Dolly came after Berry, and then Balthazar, and then the others. Flutter was the last one to set off. She took a deep breath and pushed herself off. The only problem was she didn't know how to stop. She carried on skiing over the next hill and then the hill after that until she had skied a very long way away from the others. The little butterfly girl only stopped when she fell over into a big pile of snow. It was a while before the others realised that Flutter was missing. Flutter doesn't know how to ski, the green grub eventually told them. She can't ski, they all asked in surprise. This was her first time. She was very nervous, but she didn't dare to mention it. Oh, I'm frightened that something terrible has happened to her. The friends set off to search for Flutter. Dr. Owl was flying past, and he spotted Flutter in the snow below. Flutter, what happened to you? he asked. I couldn't stop, and I fell over in the snow. I really hurt myself. I thought I'd never be able to stop. I don't want to ski again, Flutter sobbed. Dr. Owl felt very sorry for the little butterfly girl, so he put her on his back and took her to his house. I'll bandage you up, and then I'll take you to Iris's house. I'm sure the others will be looking for you, Dr. Owl said in a reassuring voice. The little friends frantically searched around, but they couldn't find Flutter anywhere. They walked sadly back to Iris's house. But Flutter was waiting for them when they arrived. They were overjoyed. Hooray! Are you all right, Flutter? Tell us what happened to you, Dolly told her. Flutter told them the whole story from beginning to end. So you don't know how to ski, Iris asked in surprise. I'll teach you. You'll soon learn how to turn and stop, and you'll be able to ski down even the steepest hills. Thank you, the butterfly girl said with a smile. Iris started to teach Flutter to ski the very next morning. By the end of the first day, the little butterfly girl could ski down small hills and stop safely at the bottom. Look! Flutter can ski! This calls for a celebration! Stanley shouted, and he started to play a tune on the icicles. The others sang and danced around the happy little butterfly. Barry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? Bubbles Tower. It was a lovely summer afternoon and Bubble the baby beetle decided to play with his colourful building blocks. I'm going to build a tall tower with my blocks, he thought to himself and carried them to a hill nearby. He tipped the bright blocks out of their box in the shade of a big oak tree. 
As the tower grew, it was harder and harder for Bubble to reach the top. He had to stand on tiptoe and was just reaching for the top when his hand slipped and the tower tumbled to the ground. Oh, no! Bubble complained. Now I have to start all over again. So the baby beetle started again from the beginning. The tower soon began to grow and was very tall indeed. But oh dear, an acorn from the oak tree knocked the baby beetle's tower down. My lovely tower! My tower's ruined again! It was the silly oak tree's fault, he said out loud. So Little Bubble started again, but this time he moved out from under the old oak tree. He was stacking the blocks on top of each other when his friends Berry the Snail, Dolly the Ladybug and Stanley the Stag Beetle came walking over. Wow, you've built a beautiful tower, Bubble, they all said. Yes, it's nearly finished. All I have to do is put the red triangle on the very top. But then the wind blew and toppled his tall tower. Bubble got very angry. I don't believe it. I don't want to build towers anymore. I'm going home. His friends ran after him. Bubble, wait! Why don't we rebuild your tower together? No, I don't want to build towers anymore. You can't build a really high tower with this many blocks anyway, grumbled. He went into his house and slammed the door shut. How can we help Bubble? Dolly puzzled. We've got to think of a way to cheer him up somehow. I know what we can do, Stanley said. I've got another set of building blocks at home. I'll go and fetch them so we can build a really high tower together. That's a super idea. I have a box full of building blocks too. And I'll bring mine. We'll build the tallest tower ever. Berry pulled his blocks in a little trailer. Dolly pushed hers in a wheelbarrow and Stanley carried his in a big basket. Hello, Bubble. Look, we brought our building blocks. Why don't we build a big tower together? Dolly asked nicely. We could build it in your house so that the wind won't knock it down again, Berry added. Goodness me, look at all those building blocks. We'll be able to build a very big tower with them, the baby beetle said with a smile. And now it's time to pop the red triangle on the top. You should put it on, Bubble, Stanley suggested. Hooray! It's finished! They all shouted together. Then Berry, Dolly and Stanley said goodnight to Bubble. The baby beetle went to bed very happy that night. He stared at the tower until he fell fast asleep. Barry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? Easter eggs. Easter had arrived at last. Flutter the butterfly girl, Rosita the rose beetle, Leapy the grasshopper girl and Zephyr the dragonfly all gathered together at Dolly's house to paint eggs for Easter. How many eggs do we have to paint? Rosita asked. Now let's see, Berry is certain to come and visit tomorrow, but so is Balthazar, Stanley, Eddie, Bubble, Alfonso and Sam Snail. That means we need to paint seven eggs each. We'd better get started. Oh, they look so 
pretty. I'm sure that the boys will love them, Flutter told the others. It's time to go home. I've got to get up early tomorrow to make pancakes for the boys, Flutter said. I'm going to bake scones, Rosita said. And I'm going to make an apple strudel, Dolly added. All the girls got up bright and early the next morning. Flutter hurried into the kitchen, put on her apron and mixed up a big batch of pancake batter. Rosita popped her apron on and started to knead her scone dough. Dolly rolled her pastry out and Zephyr made a sponge roll. Leapy woke up feeling quite excited. Boys never get up early, I've still got plenty of time to bake an apple pie. And she put a big basket of apples on the table. Oh dear. The basket of apples tipped over and knocked her pretty painted Easter eggs onto the floor. They were all <laughs> ruined. Oh, my eggs! Now what am I going to do? What will I give to my visitors? The little grasshopper girl sobbed as she ran to Dolly's house. Dolly, I've smashed all seven of my eggs! Help me! I haven't got time, Leapy. I'm busy baking. But I've still got two unpainted eggs. If you paint them quickly, they'll be dry by the time the boys come. Rosita! Oh, my eggs got smashed! Can you help? I'm too busy baking, but you can have these three white eggs. You've still got time to paint them if you hurry. Flutter! Help! I've got to paint my eggs all over again. The first lot got broken. All of them? I am sorry, but I can't help now. My pancakes will burn. You can have these two unpainted eggs I've got left over. Something terrible has happened, Zephyr. I've broken all the eggs I painted yesterday. Please help me because I haven't got time to paint another seven eggs. Leapy complained to her dragonfly friend. I know who can help you. Come with me. The two friends ran through the forest all the way to a cave. The spider stumbled sleepily from his home. Oh, can you help us, spider? Zephyr asked. Leapy's eggs all got broken. And now she has to paint new ones and there's not much time left. The boys will be coming to visit her soon. If I have to, the spider grumbled. Thank you. You're very kind. Leapy got out all her paints and brushes and the two of them started to paint the eggs. The spider could paint three eggs at once. We're ready, Leapy said with a happy laugh. And then she thanked the spider for his help and she arranged the pretty eggs in a dish. There soon came a knock at Leapy's front door. She opened the door and was greeted by all seven boys at once. Happy Easter, Leapy! They had all come to see Leapy, who offered them a dish and they all chose a pretty Easter egg. I haven't got any cakes to offer you, I'm afraid, Leapy said in a whisper. And then she told them all about what had happened. Don't worry about that, the boys laughed. We ate strudel at Dolly's house, scones at Rosita's house, pancakes at Flutter's house and sponge roll at Zephyr's house. Our tummies are full. The Star House One summer evening, Berry and Dolly were sitting playing cards in Dolly's house when they spotted a bright light over the hill. What was that? Berry asked. It looked like a shooting star. A shooting star? Let's go and take a closer look, Dolly suggested. Berry and Dolly held hands and walked in the direction of the strange light. Look over there, Berry! The little snail boy's mouth fell open in surprise. Right on the top of the hill stood a house the shape of a star. Where did that come from? It wasn't there the other day, Berry whispered. You stay here and I'll run and tell the others, Dolly whispered back and she flew off to tell Balthazar, Flutter and Stanley. When they were all together, the group of friends crept slowly towards a peculiar house. 
Stanley knocked on the front door. A shy girl popped her head around the door. She had long hair that sparkled with tiny stars and golden wings that glistened in the darkness. Berry was the first to speak. Who are you and how did you get here? But the girl didn't say a word. Can we help you? No answer again. The girl just stood there and said nothing. All right then, if you're not going to speak, then don't. Come on, let's go home. Wait a minute, Dolly said. Perhaps she can't speak. She can't speak? The others asked back in amazement. Dolly picked up a stick and scripted a star on the ground. Then she handed the stick to the girl. The little girl reached for the stick and started to draw. A little harp? Dolly asked, and the little girl nodded. You've lost it? Flutter asked, and the little girl pointed to the window. It fell out of the window? The little girl nodded again. I don't understand, Balthazar grumbled. I understand, Dolly said. She lives up in the sky, but she dropped her harp out of the window and she's come down here to look for it. Then let's help her, Balthazar suggested. Don't worry, we'll find it, they all told her, and they hurried off into the forest to search for her missing instrument. I can't find it, Berry said with a sorry sigh. I've looked in all the bushes. I can't find it either and I've looked absolutely everywhere, Balthazar added. I'm going to take a look higher up, Flutter told them and she flapped up into the trees. Here it is, here it is, I found it. The little butterfly girl soon shouted. Flutter lifted a little golden harp out of the canary's nest. She carefully handed the harp back to the star girl. The little girl flew back into the house and closed the door. She lifted a sparkling star out of her hair and gave it to Flutter. Is that for me? The little butterfly girl asked in surprise, and the star girl nodded. Then she sat in the window and started to play her harp. And as she played, the star house began to lift higher and higher. She's flying up into the sky, Dolly said with her eyes wide in wonderment. Soon it looked as tiny as all the other twinkling stars in the night sky. It's a shame that she had to go. Stanley sighed. Flutter took very good care of her twinkling star. She kept it in a little box and only wore it in her hair on very special days. It always reminded her of the little girl playing the harp in her star house, high up in the sky. Barry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? Earache. It was a sunny autumn afternoon and Dolly decided to go and see her friend Berry. I'm going down to the stream to collect pebbles. Do you want to come? But Berry didn't feel like going out to play. I don't know, Dolly. I'm very cold and I've got a headache and my ears really hurt. Oh, Berry, your ears are all red, Dolly said. And you've got a temperature. I'll fly and fetch Dr Owl. The ladybird flew straight to Dr Owl's tree. Dr Owl, you need to come quickly. Berry feels very poorly. Dr Owl quickly packed his doctor's bag, put on his white coat and hurried to see the sickly snail. Hello there, Berry. Let me have a look at you. I need to listen to your chest. So Berry took off his pyjama top and breathed in like the doctor said. Open wide. I need to look at your throat now. I don't want to, Berry snapped. But I have to see if it's red or not, Dr Owl explained and shone a torch down the little snail's throat. And now I'll take a peek inside your ear. This was really too much for Berry. He started to cry and clamped his hands over his ears. 
Don't be silly, Berry. It won't hurt a bit. And Dolly held Berry's hand to make him feel better. She was right. It didn't hurt a bit. Well, Berry, Dr Owl explained, you've bad earache. You've gone and caught a nasty cold. You need to have a spoonful of this medicine every day. Drink lots of sweet tea and put bags of warm wheat on your ears. Berry's friends came to help him right away. Balthazar brought honey, Flutter brought chamomile flowers, and Stanley brought rose hips, and they made tea for the patient. Dolly warmed the wheat in a pan and poured it into little cloth bags. Hold these on your ears until they cool down. Berry put the bags on and didn't take them off until they cooled down. Next morning, Dolly found a handful of shiny pebbles on Berry's table. Wow, Berry, lovely pebbles. Who gave you these? I found them down by the stream, Berry said proudly. You went down to the stream? Dolly asked angrily. That was very silly, Berry. You're still not better. You'll get sick again. And Dolly was right. Berry was soon back in bed with a temperature. His little friends came to visit him every day. They read him stories and put on puppet shows. But just as Berry started to get better, Dolly started feeling worse. Now she'd got earache, and this time Berry took care of Dolly. He made her tea and warmed the wheat bags for her ears. Now it was time for Dr Owl to pay Dolly a visit. Gracious me! It seems we have a new patient. I think you must have caught it from Berry. He told Dolly exactly what to do. Then he took another quick look at Berry. You look well enough, but I'll examine you just in case. Everything's fine. You've made a full recovery, little snail. Another few days passed. Dolly did as she was told and took her medicine. She drank plenty of tea and stayed in bed, and she soon felt much better. Dr Owl came to see her one last time and told her she was fine. So now we can go down to the stream together and collect pebbles. Berry was very excited. Hooray, let's all go down to the stream, Dr Owl's three chicks tweeted. Remember to dress up nice and warm. It's cold outside. But there was no need to warn Dolly and Berry. They both wore a scarf, a hat and warm boots. They stayed and played until it got dark and collected a whole bucket full of shiny pebbles. Berry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? Santa. One snowy morning, Dolly the ladybird turned to Berry the snail and said, Hey Berry, Santa's coming tonight. Really? Berry wondered. That's right, he leaves presents in the boots of good children. Remember to put your boots in the window. That evening, Berry cleaned his boots and popped them in the window. He was so excited when he went to bed that he couldn't get to sleep. He stared out at the sky to see when Santa would appear with his reindeer sleigh. Dolly got up early the next morning. She ran straight to the window. Her boots were packed with presents, colouring pencils and a big red apple. Berry ran straight to his window too. He was very excited. He couldn't wait to see what Santa had brought him. But, oh dear, his little boots were empty. Berry was so upset that he didn't see the huge red parcel in the other window. He looked inside his boots again and again. He shook them upside down, but there was nothing in them. He was so sad that he decided to run away. Santa didn't bring me anything, but I've been such a good little snail. Dolly went over to Berry's house. Hello. Look what I got from Santa. 
Dolly started to worry. She knocked and knocked, but Berry didn't open the door. Where's Berry gone? I have to find him. Stanley the stag beetle, Balthazar the bee and Flutter the butterfly went with her. Berry? Berry! 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 <laughs> it was getting dark by the time the four friends found Berry. He was sitting on a tree stump and crying. Dolly ran to him. What's wrong, Berry? What happened? Santa didn't bring me anything, but I've been such a good little snail. Don't be silly. I'm sure you got a present, Dolly reassured her friend. Maybe it was so big, Santa couldn't fit it in your boots and he put it somewhere else. No, I didn't get anything. I don't think Santa's real at all. Just then, a sleigh appeared in the sky. It was being pulled by two reindeers. Ho, ho, ho! Santa waved at the children. I hope you all liked your presents. See you again next year. Berry was so surprised. Let's all go to Berry's and look for his present. The little snail felt much better already. They saw the big red parcel the minute they walked into Berry's house. Look, your present's in the other window. There it is. It's wonderful. Berry opened the present. It was a colourful wind chime. When Berry shook it, the little bells knocked into each other and made a pretty tinkling sound. It's beautiful. Stanley fixed the wind chime by the door and they all said goodnight to Berry. Berry jumped happily into bed and fell fast asleep to the tinkling of the chime. Witches. It was a warm summer day and Berry, Dolly and their friends were talking about witches. Do you really think witches exist? Balthazar the bee asked. And they fly around on broomsticks at night? I'm not sure, Berry mumbled. Then Berry and Dolly decided to walk home. Why don't we come back here later? We might see some witches the ladybird suggested. They packed themselves a tasty picnic and went back to the meadow. They stared at the sky for a long time, but nothing happened. Come on, Dolly, let's go home. I don't think witches are real. Dolly stopped and stared. Berry, I just heard a strange noise from behind that tree. Oh, Berry, the leaves are moving. The two friends hugged each other in fright. A witch suddenly flew out and Berry and Dolly screamed. Then another witch appeared in the sky. Run, Berry, run and hide. And they ran as fast as they could. The two of them hid behind a bush. Oh, Dolly, it's too bad our friends aren't here with us. Just then, the two witches landed, took off their capes and hats and turned to smile. But your friends are here. It was us, Flatter and Balthazar. This made Dolly very mad. Really? You were the witches? It was very mean of you to scare us like that. It was only meant to be a joke, Balthazar explained. Berry was angry too. It was a very bad joke. You'll be sorry you did this. And the two friends stomped off home. 
We should play a joke on them now, Berry. Do you think we should scare them too? That's it, Dolly exclaimed. I've got an idea. Flutter and Balthazar were left standing in the meadow. What should we do now? They felt a bit ashamed. Maybe it wasn't such a good idea after all. Berry and Dolly ran to the ladybird's house and dressed up as little devils. They put black clothes on with black hats and added red horns to make themselves look like real devils. Hurry, Dolly! Berry was impatient. I can see them coming. They quickly jumped behind a bush and waited for Flutter and Balthazar to get close. Then they jumped out and scared the living daylights out of their friends. Help! Devils! The butterfly and the bee screamed. Now do you see how bad it is when someone scares you? The little snail said. What? Is that you, Berry? That was a really nasty thing to do. Nasty thing? Your witches were much scarier, Berry shouted. That's not true. The devils were scarier. That's enough, Dolly told them off. Stop this silly arguing. Let's be friends. We promise never to do it again. But you have to promise not to scare us either. You're right, the others nodded. Do you want to try the devil's hats on? Dolly asked. Yes, please. You can try our witch's hats on if you like and sit on our broomsticks. Whippee! This is super, Berry whooped. We're flying just like witches. Yes, Balthazar agreed. Like real witches. <laughs>